many people who wouldn't think twice about wrenching on their own vehicles. Engine swaps, lift kits, you name it, they would do it. But when I say transmission work, people run and pay someone else to do work they could have done themselves. I am not an authority on rebuilding transmissions. In fact, this little three-speed that I have called Pandora's box, full of little demons, will be my first. However, I am confident the parts and wisdom of Novak conversion. Together, we can show that this Borg Warner T90 three-speed is not full of little demons or all these little needle bearings from hell, but rather a handful of simple gears, bearings, shafts, and gaskets that make this transmission turn. I hope this video will give you the confidence you need to open up and dive into your very own transmission. Now you've probably already noticed that my T90 is already disassembled. I'm not going to be showing you the disassembly process in this video, but rather the assembly. If you have any questions or concerns in the process of your disassembly, you can always refer to Novak Conversion's instruction sheet. The point you should be at to follow this video is exiting the dirty phase of the rebuild, which would include degreasing your case and parts, and then entering the clean phase which is inspecting and reassembling the transmission. Now you're going to see a lot less of this and more of that, so let's pull up those sleeves and get to work. Now before we get started, I would like to point out that this is the appropriate time to prep your case for paint for after assembly. You should also use a scraper to clean off any old gasket maker left behind, and then use some Scotch-Brite to clean up the machine surface. Having all of these beautifully clean parts in front of you and an empty T90 housing on the workbench, you may feel compelled to start slapping things together. Feel me. But I would urge you not to, as using parts that were never inspected may shorten the lifespan of your newly rebuilt transmission. Inspecting your parts is a straightforward process. Things to look for are chips, brakes, blunting, burrs, heat discoloration, and brilling, to name a few. Let's start with the bearings. Most of the time, bearings will roll fine, but you should feel if the center wobbles in the cage, or if you feel grinding while turning. Also if you spin them and listen, you could tell that it's rough. Now the inside ray should be smooth and not have any pitting, as seen there. Needle roller bearings, they fall in the same category, if it's pitted, replace it. If you are unsure of your transmission's history, I would suggest going ahead and replacing the two main bearings. In any disassembly, a small parts kit usually comes with needle roller bearings, so these should never be reused. Since they're very much alike, let's throw all the gears together. You may notice that some gears will have an uneven wear pattern, or even show signs of chipping or stress cracks. This wear is caused by the gears clashing during the shifting process, or debris carried in the transmission oil. If this damage is present, don't worry because you can use a variety of files and stones to dress the transmission teeth. Dressing your transmission gears is not a labor intensive job, but does take some time. Here's my dressed reversed idler gear. You can tell this because the teeth are shiny and they don't have any burrs or chips. This will allow the teeth to engage the other gears easily. Now to give you the general idea on how to dress the teeth, I have chosen the first reverse slider gear. The tooth that's outlined in black, you should be able to see a chip on the top. A decent file works well to get a lot of the jagged edge away. I have found that using a stone works quicker. The aggressive side first to clean up the surface faster and then you can polish it out with the smoother finer side. Watered down. Then flip it over and when you're done you'll end up with a really smooth surface. Understand that you're just smoothening the teeth. You don't want to go crazy and start reshaping anything. Dressing isn't the answer for everything. If you have some severe damage, it would make sense just to buy a new part. Don't go reusing gears if you have some big chips on them. 
you should look at and inspect the circular and splined bores of these gears. Now inspecting the splined bores is simple. Just slide your gear onto the main shaft and visually see if there's any play. My gear is a good example because it's heavily worn and you can see the main shaft can rotate a lot. Smooth bores with a bushing, simple. Visually check for abnormal wear or embedded material in the bushing. You can also inspect the idler shaft for any uneven wear or insert the shaft and see if you have any play up and down. Now remember, there is an oil clearance so you don't want it a real tight snug fit. Any surface that needle bearings ride on should be smooth and clear of pits. If you're not using your vehicle frequently this amount of wear may be insignificant, but if you're putting a lot of miles, you may want to just opt for a new part. There would be nothing worse than your fresh transmission failing because the needle bearings have fragmented on a rough surface. All these little needle bearings have a nasty Rockwell hardness. Great for longevity, but bad if they break. The bore of the cluster gear has a precisely ground surface. If you visually see or feel any step, you have to replace this part. And lastly are the synchros. Now don't be fooled if the chevrons look perfect. A lot of the time the wear is going to be in the tapered diameter. A sign of a sloppy synchro could be seen on your gears. This is the second gear. Here you can see that the chevrons are badly chipped. This is from clashing. For what they're worth, you might as well replace them. Now that you have inspected all your parts, you may go ahead and order any replacements. For my rebuild, I am using Novak's T90 Master Rebuild Kit, as seen here, and all new gears, so I know I will come out with a new trouble-free transmission. Let's take a closer look at Novak's T90 Master Rebuild. The kit is a well thought out product. For most rebuilds, this is the go-to kit that addresses nearly all symptoms a T90 user may face. You not only receive a new second gear, synchros, and a hardened cluster shaft, but also some commonly overlooked parts, like the shift rail poppet balls and springs. If your T90 suffers from a leaky input shaft, Novak's answer to this is a sealed front bearing and some rubber plugs. This combination will surely leave less oil spots on your garage floor. Let's begin by installing the cluster gear. Here we have four containers holding 22 needle bearings each. Six spacer rings, one split spacer sleeve, four loading tools consisting of a three quarter inch cold rolled steel bar, three quarter inch conduit, cut to two three quarter, one seven eighth in an inch, and a new main shaft. Note that you should never use grease when installing these parts. Here I will use assembly lubricant that will start dissolving in operating temperatures. If you are skeptical, this assembly lubricant will dissolve in your hands, so don't worry. Alternatives to this are petroleum jelly that can be bought at a local pharmacy. These choices are safe. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and give Novak's instructions a read. We're on page 10. A part of this will follow Rick's guide online. His instructions are well worth a look. To begin, set the larger side of the cluster gear on a piece of cardboard. Insert your 3 quarter inch cold rolled steel bar the loading tool is 6 inches and 7 eighths. Followed by the 2 3 quarter inch spacer. Next is your spacer sleeve. Next is the spacer ring. Now find one of your cups holding those 22 needle bearings. Gimme.
Now we'll put the gear on its side. Be sure to hold the cardboard. Now with the conduit, length being 1 7 8 we're looking to push the needle bearings in further and remove the other tool we put in originally. And on the back side, our initial tool comes out. Now again with the cardboard, we'll stand the gear up on its smaller diameter end. Install another spacer ring. Find another cup of 22 needle bearings. Fine. And start putting them in. Full of needle bearings? Perfect. Put the gear back on its side, holding the cardboard again. Now with the one inch conduit, push the bearings in and remove the other tool we had in the small end. Now the cardboard over the large end again, stand it up. Another spacer ring. Your other cup of 22 needle bearings. Now the last spacer ring for this side. So again, using the cardboard, flip it on its side for the last time. Get one of the tools you previously used from the small end that we just completed. Push it in and this is going to remove the last tool we inserted right here. So with that done, put the cardboard on the small side, flip it over, and we can finish loading up the large end. Put your second last spacer in. Followed by your last cup of 22 needle roller bearings. Once all your needle bearings are in, install your last spacer. Now that your cluster gear is loaded up, push it aside and bring in your transmission case. Next you want to locate your large thrust washer. Apply a generous amount of assembly lube on the back and a light coating on the face which is the brass shiny side and you're going to install it with the tab hooking on to that indent. As you can see the lube holds it in place. Now you want to spin your case around So you're viewing the smaller end. Locate your small diameter steel washer and heavily grease this one up too. Remember grease is actually assembly grease not ordinary grease. Just like the larger diameter one push it against the case and the assembly grease will hold it together. That little notch there there's another notch in the case and that just keeps this washer from spinning as the cluster gear rotates. So drag your cluster gear back. Unlike the larger diameter thrust washer that's going to face the cluster gear, the smaller one is going to face away from the cluster gear. 
So the backs with the little notches, as you see, fit in correspondence to the notches on the cluster gear. So the brass side is going to run against the thrust washer that we installed in the case. So go ahead and grease this up, put it back on. As gently as possible, you're going to want to install the cluster gear. Be sure not to lose any of the needle roller bearings. This would be the appropriate time to loop some wire around the cluster gear so you're able to lift it towards the end of the assembly. So now that you have your cluster gear sitting at the bottom of your transmission, you could go ahead and install the oil collector, but just don't fasten it down at this time. To install the reverse idler, lube up the bore, put the reverse idler in with the chamfered portion of the teeth facing forwards, When installing the reverse idler gear shaft, make sure that the slot is facing the cluster gear's idler shaft, so you can install the locking plate with ease. Let's get to the synchronizer. To start we'll need the inner hub. So what you'll want to do here is grab one of your pawl springs, and set it inside the hub with one of the ends of the springs just like that. So now since you have that turned out end of the spring facing in that direction, remember that slot, spin it around, grab another one of your springs and put it in the same, wo same one. So now you'll have the three poles themselves. What you want to do here is just put them in every slot so the hollow side faces towards the spring. So you'll notice that the springs will be kind of wandering out but you can hook them in with the ends. Now just go around and put them all in. Just the end with those springs. Now observing your synchro clutch hub, you should note two differences. One center, shown here, will be longer and narrower, and the opposite side will be short and wide. Grab the sliding portion of your synchronizer and match both of the long sides together. They should both be facing forwards. Here you can see I have the longer side of the clutch hub and the longer side of the slider and you just want to put them together. A trick to make the assembly easier, push each end of the pawl into the clutch sliding hub. Once this is done, you can push it together. Note that the synchro or blocking ring has notches cut out. These correspond to the locations of your pawls. To assemble the main shaft, I'll take the first reverse slider gear and install it forwards of the transmission. You can tell this by the smooth portion on the main shaft. So let's grease up the first reverse slider. So how we're going to slide it on is just the way it's going to be assembled. So from the front, Next, grab your second gear. You're going to want to slide it on with the tapered portion facing forward. Now we'll slide on the synchro assembly. Make sure you have both blocking rings on the front and the rear. So we'll put the snap ring on with a good pair of snap ring pliers. So now I'm going to go ahead and assemble the main shaft. 
what I have here is the oil slinger, the sealed main bearing, a hollow tube, and just a piece of aluminum stock. So the proper way to install a bearing is to press it on. Now the tube is hollow on the inside and it just so happens that the diameter matches the middle portion of the bearing. And this is where you want to put all your pressure. You never want to put it on the outside because then the pressure will be transferred to the ball bearings inside and it'll destroy the race. So here's my frozen input shaft that just came out of the freezer. You want to make sure you assemble this correct the first time. Your oil slinger is going to have some divots. So the recessed portion wants to face in towards the gear teeth. And now with the bearing, the snap ring groove is easy to remember. You just want to line it up with the other snap ring groove. Looking at it this way, you'll just drop the bearing on over top. So take your tube, slide it over the main gear. That's going to line up with the inside diameter. So the finished product should look like this. Since we're running a sealed front bearing, Novak has included a rubber plug. This plug will stop oil from migrating out of this passage, which is located at the 7 to 8 o'clock position. It is not necessary, but I went ahead and put some gasket maker on the plug. So you'll want to push it in until it's flush. Go ahead and install your main drive gear. The snap ring will rest on the case. Now is a good time to locate your larger needle bearings. There should be 14 of them and load up your main drive. Don't be discouraged if that last needle bearing doesn't want to go in. What you have to do is line it up and push it in. If you're not going to be installing your oil collector, you should plug up those two holes. Since I'm going to be replacing my front bearing retainer bolts, I'm going to use two of them and generously apply some gasket maker and insert them into their proper locations. On the other side I'll use a generous coat of Loctite. Followed by a nylock nut. If you like you can also peen the threads if there's any exposed and follow the same procedure for the remaining hole underneath. Now we're almost done assembling the T90. We have to put in our new main shaft. So we're gonna have to lift the cluster gear and slide this guy in. You'll notice that the fun thing about this job is gonna be trying to line up your new main shaft and feed it through. I thought things through a little bit better. It's actually easier if you leave your whole main shaft assembly out. Just keep your main drive gear in and that will allow you to line up the cluster gear with the gear on the main drive. And with a little bit of persuasion with a dead blow hammer, the shaft will go right in. So when you hammer in your idle or shaft, make sure you leave some space to put your keeper in. And you have to line these up so it slides down both of the idle or shafts evenly. So now that the cluster gear in the transmission is actually installed with the idle or shaft, I went back to the main shaft and you want to install your bearing plate with the recessed portion facing towards the back of the transmission. So slide that on first. Then you should have a little spacer, a bearing spacer. Slide that on the shaft and then put the bearing in. I put it with the snap ring facing the rear of the transmission. My camera died when I actually installed this 
what I had done is set the main shaft on a piece of brass or aluminum and I took the same tool I pressed the bearing on in the front of the transmission I slid that over remember you wanna you wanna install bearings by the center diameter and I just tap that on now this may present a problem when you actually go to install the main shaft because the front synchronizer is going to want to hit the gears on the way in so what you can do is slide out your main drive gear as far as it will want to go it's going to hit the gear underneath so you'll know when it bottoms out and on the main shaft nothing will go anywhere because the bearings pressed on and you have your snap ring on the front but what you want to do is with the front synchronizer slide it forward just a little bit so you can see it slid forward you don't want to go too far or else your pulse might disengage so with that done we can slide it in Point the front to slide into the 14 needle rollers. So just play with the your first reverse slider gear. It probably needs to be pushed back a little bit and your synchro a little bit forward. And there, it just popped in. Everything is turning fine. Make sure your rear bearing is seated. In the front you could just keep your retainer loose. If you want now you could just tighten it up just so things don't move around. And just make sure everything's spinning freely. So now that the bearing retainer is seated flush you could go ahead and just make sure everything's seated. Now that your transmission's put back together, for safekeeping, you can slide on your rear gear. Following this, you may as well put your washer and your provided nylock nut. On the front of the transmission, you're going to want to make sure you put this snap ring back on. You then go ahead and open up your gasket set, put your felt washer, your felt seal on the shaft, and put your gaskets on in their proper locations. It's a great idea to buy some aviation forma gasket from Permatex. This stuff works wonders on gaskets and machine surfaces. So the last thing you'll want to do in your rebuild is freshen up your shifter. To begin, grab a drill bit that fits inside the peened edge of the roll pin. You're going to want to drill it out. If drilling is too difficult because the roll pin is spinning, you could just go around and crush the edges. So once you've crushed all the edges to a smaller diameter that will fit through the hole, you can go ahead and push it out. So with a punch, at this point it would be wise to give yourself some reference marks so when you're assembling it you know you're putting it back together correctly. So with a punch, just make a faint dot. So now that you have reference marks that you understand, we'll want to turn our attention to pushing the shift rails to pop out the caps on the back. So the easiest way to get the rails out of the shifter is to mount it in a vise and make sure your shifter is not engaged in the rail that you're going to be hammering out. So start with the small one first, pop that out, the back plug and then move on to the bottom. You also want to note that 
the shifter spring and ball is going to want to shoot out of these holes. So just be prepared for that and cover it with something. So we'll go ahead and tap it out. So one cap is out. Do the same for the bottom. Now you could just follow through with punching out the rod. Now you're going to want to take a piece of paper towel or cloth and cover that hole because the poppet ball is going to want to shoot out by the force of the spring behind it. So with the ball and spring out, just repeat the same process for the remaining shaft. So now that you got both of the shift rails out, I just want to make you aware that there's two pins and these keep you from shifting into two gears at once. Now I don't know if these pins will fall out, mine seem to be staying in, but just keep that in mind. Now that you got your shift rails out, you're going to want to turn your attention to the, the spring that's holding your, your shifter in the case. There's three little ridges, one over here, another here, and over there, that are casted into the case and that's just holding the spring in. So if you get a screwdriver, you could wiggle it under the spring and twist it. And all you want to do is twist it so you can walk it off that little casted piece in the case. Just do them one at a time, pop the spring off over here first, then get both screwdrivers to the next side, and now we'll do the last over here. It'll get easier as you go, but don't get frustrated because it'll take a little bit of time to get this down. Then when you get to a certain point, it should be free enough where you could just pull it out. And see, it's good to take it out because it's full of rust. You want to clean all that up. And chances are the bottom where the ball sits is going to be pretty rusty too. So I went ahead and degreased all the parts. And now we can reassemble. So you want to drop the shifter in so the cutout slides into the pin. drop your spring back on. The spring's only going to fall down so far. To install it the rest of the way, you're going to have to push each end of the spring around those uh, protrusions in the shift housing. So as you can see, I'm just going around with the screwdriver, pushing it on the edge of the spring and taking my hammer and just gently tapping it down. And just keep doing that all the way around. And just like that, you're done. Now I should touch upon inspecting your shift parts when you have them out. Don't worry about the poppet balls and springs because you're going to replace those regardless. The shifter forks, you want to look at the face for wear, so both sides, and you want to look on the insides. It'll be evident if there's heavy wear, you'll be able to pinpoint it and replace the parts you need. So on my shift rail, make sure your sliding portions are clean and aren't heavily pitted. Alright, so I got you back at the bench vise and we're gonna look at the orientation of the shifters so if you recall we made some punch marks so I have two here I have two on the shift cover and then I have one over here and one on the shift cover so now I remember that's how it's supposed to go in before I go and install this shift rail I wanna let you in on a little trick so we're taking this apart because it's worn, right? 
So you could see here is where the old poppet ball was riding against. So you know this was facing the poppet ball, so it would have been installed that way. So if you spin it, so the wear point is facing you, you're going to have a fresh surface for that poppet ball to ride onto again. And coat everything with assembly lube and start sliding the stuff in. So go ahead and install your spring. I just put some grease on the end of it. Hopefully it'll help me out. If you guys do this, you might want to turn your shifter upright, I guess, so you can just drop the parts in. Now with something pointy, just push it in. Oh, that didn't work. So when you have it held in there, just tap the end of the shaft. It should pop in. And it slipped out. The struggle is real, my friends. Aha. So to install the bottom shaft, you're going to have to install it the same way so you're not going to get a fresh surface on the other side for the poppet ball to ride on, but that's okay. Now when you're pushing the shifter rail in, turn the indent so it's facing down because that pin will get hung up in that indent. So making sure that on the opposite side, so where the poppet ball is, you want one notch sticking out and then you could go ahead and push your bottom shaft in. And now you, you remember you made reference marks on your other shift fork, so just follow them. I have two here, two there, one there, one there, so I know it goes in this way. So the last spring, the last poppet ball, so Take a really small Allen key and you could push the poppet ball in. So now that you got both of the rails in, both of the forks in, you're going to want to go ahead and take the roll pins and just push them in. For the last one you could get a pair of pliers. You could grab the notch and spin the shaft down so you, you could clearly see the hole. And there you are. Your top cover is rebuilt. On the end of your shifter housing, you don't want to forget to drive in your little welch plugs. This is just going to keep any contamination from entering the shift rails or oil from leaking out. I would like to thank you for taking the time to watch my T90 rebuild. I hope that you were able to take something useful away and put it towards your T90. If you need further assistance, there are plenty of avenues you can explore online. The T90 is still a popular transmission in use. If you require parts, I suggest you contact Novak or consult their rebuild instructions. Alright guys, so a significant amount of time and effort goes into these videos. I hope you're able to take a lot of positives away from this experience. If you'd be so kind to give me a thumbs up, share the video, and lastly subscribe because I have this awesome Dana 18 rebuild coming up.